In 1929, two sisters, Chio and Satsu, are sold by their poor father and taken to Kyoto. Once they reach the city, Chio is sold again to an Okia, an establishment where geisha live and are booked, but Satsu is considered not pretty enough and is sold to a body house. In the Okia, Chio meets the ladies in charge, Granny, Auntie, and the leader mother, whose attention immediately goes to Chio's blue eyes. After being inspected, Chio is locked in her new room with another girl called Pumpkin, who quickly tells her to stop yelling about her sister or she'll be hit with a stick. Pumpkin also explains that if Chio behaves, she may be chosen to go to geisha school one day. The next day, Chio begins to work on chores with Pumpkin. Chio gets a little upset when she learns they aren't allowed to leave the building, but she doesn't mind gossiping with her new friend. This is how she learns that this Okia's geisha likes to sneak around with a man, which isn't allowed. This geisha is Hatsumomo, who shows up to tell them to keep it quiet. She also notices Chio's eyes and tells her to stay out of her room because she stinks. Later, Chio learns that mother only puts up with Hatsumomo because she brings in good money, it's thanks to her that Chio is being fed. The kimonos she wears though, are still not hers, they're extremely expensive and belong to the Okia. Chio works hard and well, getting mother to send her to geisha school with pumpkin. This is the first time she leaves the house since she's arrived so Chio wants to try to go looking for her sister, but Pumpkin doesn't let her because it could get them in trouble. At school, she learns various skills that geishas must know for their profession, like dancing and hosting. One afternoon, Chio is ordered to tidy up Hatsumomo's room, who she just saw getting busy with a boy in secret. Since the order comes from the house ladies, Chio can't ignore it, so when Hatsumomo finds her touching her things, she gets angry. As revenge, she tells Chio she knows where her sister is but denies telling her until Chio swears herself to her. In the evening, Hatsumomo comes back to the Okia with a fellow geisha friend. They're both quite tipsy and looking over an expensive kimono they've paid a maid to steal from Mama, one of the district's most prominent geisha. Hatsumomo makes Chio ruin the kimono with ink before taking it back to Mama as a prank. Chio is supposed to sneak around, but she fails and gets caught, with earns her a beating with a stick and a bigger debt with the Okia because Mother had to pay for the kimono. Afterward, Hatsumomo finds her and scolds her for failing, but Chio points out she's kept her promise, so Hatsumomo finally tells her where Satsu is working. She pretends she does it as a favor, but actually, she sees Chio as potential competition and is trying to find a way to get her to leave. A few evenings later, Chio walks with Hatsumomo to her next appointment to keep the umbrella up for her under the rain. Instead of waiting for her until she's done though, she runs to the red light district to find her sister. Satsu is happy to see her and explains she went to the Okia looking for her but she was kicked out, so Chio explains nobody ever told her. She wants to run away tonight, but Satsu needs to steal some money first. They agree to meet the following night at the bridge, but Chio isn't sure she'll be able to make it. Satsu confesses she's already waited enough, and if Chio doesn't show up, she'll run away alone. Chio returns to the Okia and finds Hatsumomo getting busy with her secret boyfriend, causing Hatsumomo to send him away before they're found. Mother still hears noises and comes out, and Hatsumomo says she's caught Chio lying again. As mother begins beating her up, Chio realizes she doesn't owe Hatsumomo anything anymore and tells mother what she saw early. Furious, mother inspects Hatsumomo's and confirms Chio's story is real, so she slaps her and forbids her from seeing the boy again because geishas aren't free to love. She also orders to bolt all doors, now nobody can leave the building without her knowing. The following night, Chio decides to climb the roofs to try to escape in order to meet with her sister, but she falls and gets severely injured. Satsu escapes on her own and Chio never sees her again. To make matters worse, news arrives that Chio's parents have died, and the doctor's bill has been added to her debt. Mother decides to stop investing in Chio's geisha training and keeps her as a mere servant instead so she can pay the Okia back. One afternoon, Chio stops by the bridge to think about how bad her life has gone. That's when she's found by Chairman Ken, who doesn't like seeing a cute little girl sad and buys her a shaved ice dessert to make her smile. After admiring her eyes, Ken gives her some money inside his handkerchief before leaving, and Chio can't help noticing he's keeping two geishas as company. It's then that Chio finally finds purpose in her life, she swears to become a geisha so one day she can see Ken again. She uses the money he gave her at the temple to make a wish, and she saves the handkerchief as a memory of this special meeting. Many years later, Pumpkin debuts as a geisha under Hatsumomo's tutelage while Chio, who is now 15, continues to work as a servant for the Okia. One evening, Chio runs to the dinner her friend is hosting to bring the instrument she forgot and notices that Ken is among the guests. However, when Ken hears a noise and comes outside to check, Chio runs away, not ready to meet him yet. A few days later, Mama shows up at the Okia to talk to Mother. She points out that since Granny died, a servant isn't very needed anymore, so she would like to take Chio under her wing. She'll cover Chio's expenses until her debut, and if in six months after her debut Chio doesn't pay her debt back, Mama swears to pay Mother twice over. Mother is eager to accept such a deal, but Mama adds one condition. If Chio does erase her debt in that amount of time, 
then mother won't have a part in her future earnings. The Okia gets Chio ready to be sent back to training, which makes Hatsumomo jealous. Pumpkin is supportive of her friend, but when Hatsumomo notices, she slaps Pumkin and tells her to stop because Chio is now her rival. From then on, Pumpkin doesn't hang out with Chio anymore. As promised, Mama takes Chio under her wing and teaches her everything there's to know to be a geisha. Chio also gets to meet the Baron, who happens to be Mama's personal patron. Fortunately, Mama has forgiven Chio for ruining her kimono because she knows it was part of Hatsumomo's schemes and treats Chio like a sister. Her lessons include the arts but also the right way to walk and charm men, among other things. The most important rule however, is that geishas are hosts and entertainers, not courtesans. They don't sell their bodies. Chio does her best to pay attention and learn all the tricks. When she's finally ready, Mama gives her a new name to be reborn as a geisha, Sayuri. Her debut as a geisha comes during a dinner the Baron is having with some friends from the military. Her dance is very well received, but Hatsumomo is there too to throw passive-aggressive comments at her. Sayuri doesn't allow her to put her down and meets Sass with Sass, embarrassing her in front of everyone. Later in the Okia, Hatsumomo hits Sori and promises to destroy her. The next day, Mama explains that Hatsumomo will spread rumors and try to steal her clients, so they need to find a way to unwit her. Mama decides to take Sayuri to her first sumo match, where they'll entertain Ken and his business partner Nobu. Sayuri wants to chat with Ken, but Nobu is the boss of the company and the most important catch, which means Mama orders to entertain him instead. Nobu usually doesn't like geishas, but Sayuri manages to impress him with her conversation skills and subtle compliments. Both women leave when Hatsumomo arrives with Pumpkin, not wanting to give them a chance to start another argument. A few days later, Mama gets a plan rolling to undermine Hatsumomo. The first step is for Sayuri to make a wound on her leg so she can be sent to see Dr. Crab. Sayuri is skeptical but follows Mama's orders, and when Dr. Crab sees her bare skin, he's charmed by her beauty. Later, during another dinner with Ken and his business friends, Nobu gives Sayuri a beautiful comb. In return, Sayuri secretly gives Nobu a special box with a rice cake as Mama had previously instructed her to. After dinner, Mama asks Sayuri to give another one of these boxes to Dr. Crab. Sayuri doesn't understand what's going on, so Mama finally explains, these boxes are a way to announce Sayuri's deflowering ceremony is up for sale to the highest bidder. Mama sold hers when she was young too, and she got the highest sum ever paid, 10,000 yen, this helped her pay her debt, and now Sayuri can do the same with her own. However, when they go to see the doctor, he refuses to see them ever again. This doesn't make sense, so when Sayuri returns to the Okia, she asks Pumpkin if she knows anything about it. At first, Pumpkin refuses to betray her mentor, but eventually, she gives in to honor her old friendship with Sayuri and confesses that Hatsumomo told the doctor that Sayuri's lying and she's already had lovers before. The next day, Sayuri informs Mama of this, but she tells her not to worry because there is still plenty of fish in the sea. The next part of Mama's plan is to make Sayuri the lead in an incoming show, and she even puts up signs all over town to advertise her blue eyes. This makes Hatsumomo furious and never stops calling Sayuri by her old name. The night of the show, all the other geisha dance together in a lovely performance, and afterward, it's Sayuri's turn for her solo presentation. Her performance is captivating and earns her an ovation from the public, including Ken, Nobu, and the doctor. Sayuri becomes the most popular geisha in town and manages to give the box to Dr. Crab after convincing him not to listen to despicable rumors. In fact, she's so popular that the Baron wants him at her estate for his next party. Mama at first refuses, not wanting Sayuri to work without her supervision because of what they do to her, but the Baron makes it a direct order they can't refuse. The day of the party, Sayuri gets to spend some time with Ken and learns he owes Nobu his life. Afterward, the Baron takes her to see his kimono collection, but this is just an excuse to take her into a locked room with him and see her with no clothes on. When Sayuri returns home, Mama is furious because rumors are out and she believes them, so Sayuri's deflowering ceremony may lose value, making her worthless. Sayuri doesn't want to believe she's worthless, even if Hatsumomo keeps making fun of her for it. But later that night, Mama shows up with a huge surprise, she sold Sayuri's deflowering for 15,000 yen, surpassing her own record. This makes Mother decide that Sayuri will inherit the Okia, which destroys Pumpkin because it had been her dream to be the next madam. Hatsumomo gets furious because she's given it all to this Okia, but Mother explains she's always known she wouldn't give it to Hatsumomo or her student, because she's a manipulative bastard that would have kicked Mother out as soon as she could, instead of taking care of her as they had done for Granny. After Mother informs Sayuri that she'll have Hatsumomo's big room, Sayuri talks to Mama in private to thank her for everything. Mama explains Dr. Crab won the bid and that Nobu didn't participate because it goes against his principles. The actual highest bidder had been the Baron, but after his behavior, Mama decided to punish him by giving the win to the doctor. This is how she knows Sayuri had been telling the truth about the Baron not having had his way with her after all, nobody would pay this much for something they had already taken. Mama also admits it was her fault for not protecting her. 
The night of her deflowering comes more quickly than expected, and Sayuri behaves perfectly through it. When she returns to the Okia, Sayuri finds Hatsumomo with Ken's handkerchief in her hand. She intends to burn it, so Sayuri jumps on her to stop her, bumping into a lamp in the process and starting a fire. At first, the girls don't notice because they're too busy fighting, but when the flames begin expanding, Sayuri begins crying for help. However, a petty Hatsumomo actually decides to destroy more lamps to make the fire bigger. Hatsumomo escapes the Okia after that, leaving Sayuri as the house's geisha. At least the building is saved, even if they lose many of their precious kimonos in the fire. There's not much time to rebuild though, because that year the outbreak of World War II happens and the town is warned about incoming attacks. Most people are leaving for Osaka, but Ken knows that is the next target, so with Nobu's approval and resources, he relocates the geishas to safe spaces, Mama is sent to Kameaka as a nurse's aide, and Sayuri is sent to the hills to work for a kimono maker. Years pass and Sayuri is stuck in a routine of hard work and poor meals while the country crumbled in constant battles. It isn't until the war ends that Nobu comes to see her with some news. Mother and auntie escaped safely, but the Baron lost his business and ended things for himself. Ken is working hard in Osaka, but sadly, they've lost their factory as well. Nobu wants to start rebuilding and soon he'll be meeting with an American colonel that has the power to grant them a good contract. He's shown the colonel a picture of Sayuri and he wishes to meet her, so Nobu asks her to become a geisha again to help them get this contract. Sayuri doesn't want to return to that profession, but she can't turn down the request when Nobu mentions it would make Ken happy too. Sayuri returns home only to find things have changed a lot, there are Americans everywhere, and now every streetwalker with a painted face calls themselves a geisha, giving real geishas a bad reputation. When visiting Mama, Sayuri discovers war has changed her as well, she's tired and heartbroken over having lost the Baron, who she had feelings for. She had to sell all her kimonos and jewelry to survive, and now she works renting rooms. But after Sayuri begs for her help, Mama accepts to join her next appointment by wearing the one kimono she did keep, a memory from the day the Baron accepted to become her patron. While staying in town, Sayuri bumps into Pumpkin, who has become an Americanized escort. Sayuri apologizes for what happened years ago, admitting the Okia should have gone to her, but Pumpkin assures her she isn't angry about it anymore and she has plenty of clients now. Afterward, Mother reopens the Okia and helps Sayuri become a geisha again with a few accessories they have. The day of the business meeting, Sayuri meets Colonel Derricks, but she also gets to see Ken again. Nobu, Ken, Sayuri, Mama, and Pumpkin travel with the American soldiers to the Amami Islands, where they spend some time in the hot springs. When everyone begins sharing stories, Sayuri tries to tell her tale about the special moment on the bridge, but Ken doesn't allow her to finish. Afterward, Derricks tries to proposition Sayuri, but she turns him down, explaining it's not the geisha way. Nobu sees them from afar and later, he snaps at Sayuri because he's in love with her and doesn't want anybody else to have her. Then he confesses he's in a hurry to rebuild his business because he wants to become her patron. After Nobu leaves her with a threat that he won't be refused, Sayuri goes to see Mama to complain about this situation. However, Mama disappoints her by saying she must accept because she owes Nobu her life. He treats Sayuri gently, and that's more than what any geisha can ever dream for. Sayuri doesn't want to forget about Ken yet though, so she comes up with a plan to scare Nobu away. She finds Pumpkin and asks her for a simple favor, to bring Nobu to the garden at 9pm for a surprise. At that time, Sayuri invites Derek's to her room to get busy with him, that way when Nobu sees them, he'll consider her too dirty for his taste. However, the person Pumpkin brings isn't Nobu but Ken, who leaves as soon as he notices what's going on. At Sayuri's distress, Pumpkin confesses this is her revenge for having had the Okia stolen from her. In the morning, a hopeless and heartbroken Sayuri throws the handkerchief into the ocean. After a few days, Sayuri goes back to working as a geisha at the Okia. A very important client wants her to come over to the tea house because he has an offer to be her patron waiting for her, thus Sayuri thinks it must be Nobu. However, when she gets there, she's surprised to find Ken instead. It turns out Ken has always known Sayuri's the little girl from the bridge, and he was the one that sent Mama to tutor her after he saw her night spying on Pumpkin's hosting. Ken has always had feelings for Sayuri, but he never said anything out of respect for his debt to Nobu. Now though, Nobu isn't interested in Sayuri anymore because he's heard about Derek's, so Ken officially asks Sayuri to take him as her patron. Sayuri accepts and the two of them kiss as a sign of their new life together. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.